Hello and welcome. In this video series, we're going to take a look at second order partial derivatives. The analogy to multivariable functions is really the same as that that you experienced in your first calculus course. Uh, so let's actually jump back to an example from calculus one. Suppose we have the parabolic function y equals x squared, and we're going to, uh, we know that function represents a parabola that opens upwards. Here's a picture of its graph. And so what we want to be able to do is think about what the second derivative is going to tell us. So first of all, uh, we, we observe that this is a concave up function, concave up. And an easy way to remember concave up versus concave down is it is like a cup. Um, I'm not a big fan of mnemonics, but um, this one reminds me that concave up is like a cup and concave down is like a frown. Um, I know that that's silly, but it works like a frown and that is concave down. So let's first of all, before we come back, so we know that this is concave, concave up because it faces upwards, it opens upwards, and but let's take a look at a table of values for this function. So we're going to build a difference table and I'm just going to look at the values of x and y and then I'm also going to look at the change in y compared to the change in x. So let me just go ahead and pick a few values here. Let's just go from negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So if I plug these into y equals x squared, I get 4, 1, 0, 1, 4. And if we look, take a look at the rate of change, first of all, we know that the change in x is, is positive 1 here. So this tells me that the x value, the change in x, is 1. And so that means that here when x increases by 1, I see that the y value increases or decreases by 3. So this, well, the y value drops by 3. And then in the next, from x equals negative 1 to x equals 0, the y value only drops by 1. And then the y value increases by 1. And then the y value increases by 3. Now, if I want to look at, so we can think about this sort of like the first derivative, except uh, this is not for an infinitesimally small change in x. We have to remember that derivatives have infinitesimally small changes in the input, but this is a analogous to the partial, the first derivative. And now let's take a look at a second column. Let's look at the change in the uh, change in y over the change in x per change in x. So what we mean by that is let's take a look at, so this is telling us that there was a decrease of three units in y per a one unit change in x, and this was a decrease of one unit per uh, a one unit change in x. But now if the change in, we, we look at the difference between those, we notice that negative three to negative one is actually an increase of two units. And so uh, this is becoming less negative, therefore, to go from negative three to negative one, that represents an increase of two units. From negative to one to one, that's an increase of two units. And from positive one to positive three, that's an increase of two units. So what we're actually measuring here, this is sort of like the first derivative, and this is sort of like the second derivative. So this is analogous to dy dx, and this is analogous to the second derivative of y with respect to x. And so what we notice is the second derivative or the change in the rate of change is bigger than zero. In fact, the second derivative is equal to two and it's a positive two. So the fact that the slope is getting gradually more or less and less negative to become more and more positive essentially gives me this visualization. So when x is negative 1 or negative 2 over here, we have a really steep negative rate of change if this curve kept going up. At x equals negative 1, we have a slightly less steep negative value. At x equals 0, we have an even less steep. Actually, this one has a slope of 0. And then the slopes become more and more positive. So what we should be able to observe is that if the slopes are growing, which they are, a negative number 
to another negative number can represent growth if that second number becomes less negative than the previous one. And so what this allows us to infer is that if I'm going to have a positive change in the rate of change, this must mean that the function is concave up. So this leads me to the conclusion that I have a function that is concave up. Now, if the opposite were true, if the slopes were decreasing, that is, imagine for a moment that I'm looking at y equals negative x squared, then all of these values would be negative 4, negative 1, 0, negative 1, negative 4, and we would actually see that this would be uh, in, in, uh, an increase of 3, an increase of 1, a decrease of 1, and a decrease of 3, and these would all be negative over here. So what we learned in Calculus 1 from, and hopefully a little bit of intuition behind this little mini example here, is that if the second derivative, if I look at the second derivative at a point, and that second derivative is positive, the function is concave up. So a good analogy, again, a little mnemonic to help you remember this so you can recall it quickly, is it uh, looks like a smile if you put the positive signs and that those positive signs reflect the value of the second derivative. If, however, you have a negative second derivative, you have a concave down like a frown. Again, I know that's kind of silly, but it does help us associate the value of the second derivative. Now, this a function can be both concave up and concave down. So that's why we're saying at a point x equals a, if you plug in that value, you find the second derivative, you plug that value in, and you get a positive number, then at that point, the function is actually concave up. So if I were to draw something that looked like this, and you were to see this type of graph, well, you can see that here the graph is concave down, but then there's this special point which we used to refer to as the inflection point, that inflection point now causes the function to become concave up. So if I were to, for example, if this point right here represented x equals 3, and this point over here represented, say, x equals 6, then what I would find is the second derivative evaluated at x equals 3 would be a negative value, would be less than 0, because the function is concave down. If we evaluated the second derivative at x equals 6, we would get a positive value emphasizing that that region or that at that point we, we are in a concave up portion of the graph. Now there are functions that have second derivatives that are equal to 0 and that just means that the function is neither concave up nor concave down. So in fact at an inflection point the function is neither. So one way that we can also think about this is if we take a look at the function f of x equals x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2x plus 5, for instance, and I find its first derivative, which would give me 3x squared minus 6x plus 2. And then if I were to find its second derivative, I would get the derivative of the first derivative, which is 6x minus 6. And then if I set that equal to 0, I would be able to find any inflection points. So this would imply that x is equal to 1. So I'm, I'm, what I'm observing right now is that at x equals 1, there's an inflection point. So if this were my x-axis, at x equals 1, I should see that the function changes concavity. So let me pick a value that's to the left of that and evaluate, for example, at x equals 0. If I look at f double prime of 0, I'm going to plug in 0 for x, I get 6 times 0 minus 6, which is negative 6. So that means that I have a concave, I should see a concave down graph here. And then at this inflection point, if it is an inflection point, then f prime of some value over to the right of x equals 1 should, if I, if I am changing concavities, then at x equals 2, well, let's see, 6 times 2 minus 6 is positive 6, and that graph is concave up. So I should notice that here that graph transitions to a concave up graph. And if we were to graph this, we would see something similar to this. Uh, maybe we're exaggerating some of the curves, but the idea that here I have an inflection point should hold and, and, and be true.
And we should also note that at the inflection point, if you were to plug in x equals 1 to the second derivative, you do get uh, a second derivative value of 0. And that's just because at that point in particular, that's a transition point from concave down to concave up. So that point itself, at that point, the graph is neither concave up nor concave down. Now for multivariable functions, a very similar idea holds. Um, except now we have two part, uh, second derivatives. We have the second derivative with respect to x, and we denote that as the second derivative, uh, kind of standard notation at the point a, b. So now you have to tell me where you are in the x direction and in the y direction for me to tell you whether the graph is concave up or concave down at that point. So if that value is, if the second derivative evaluated at your x, y coordinate, is positive, then you have a concave up in the x direction. If it's negative, then it's concave down in the negative in the x direction. For the second derivative with respect to y, similar idea, except at that point a, b, we're looking at uh, going in the y direction only. So let's take a look at this visualization right here. In this visualization, we can, if we call this the x-axis right here, and we call this the y-axis over here, then let's say I pick a point. Um, let's say I pick the point right in the center, which we'll just say that point right there, that point on the graph, we're going to say that that point is the point 0, 0. So that's x and y. Okay, so at that point, if I were just to look at this in the x direction, which is horizontally from left to right, we see that the graph of this function is concave down. Okay, right there we see that that graph is concave down going in the x direction at that point. So what I should be able to say is the second derivative at the point 0, 0 with respect to x is going to be greater than 0. It is concave up. Concave up. Now in the y direction we notice that the actually the opposite holds. So in the y direction going in, in this direction back and forth we see that we have a kind of a downward facing parabola right there. And so what that should tell us is the second derivative with respect to y at the point 0, 0 is negative. And in the y direction, the graph of this particular surface is concave down. And so that's why it's important to talk about both of these because it is possible to have something that looks somewhat like a Pringle, like a Pringle potato chip where you can have concave down in one direction, but concave up in the other. Now, of course, for something like a paraboloid that looks more like this, you can actually have both. Uh, the, in the x direction, you can have concave up, and in the y direction, you have concave up. And that's totally okay as well, but it's important to note that we can have concave down in one direction and concave up in the other. There's one more derivative. Uh, we, we won't discuss this, the meaning of this quite yet, but it's called the mixed partial derivative. And the mixed partial derivative is just the derivative that you take first, say, with respect to y of the function, and then you take the derivative with respect to x. So the other way you, you note that is the second derivative with respect to x then uh, and with respect to y. So here we're taking the derivative with respect to y with respect to y first, and here we're taking the derivative of f with respect to x and then with respect to y. So this is with respect to x first. Okay, we'll soon think about what these mean in practical terms, but let's take a look at an example first to see how we would compute these. So um, let's find all the, the, mixed, the partial derivatives here. So the first thing we need is the first derivative, and I'm just going to go ahead and do this by hand here, but you can do it with Wolfram Alpha. So this is going to be 9x squared minus 0. The partial derivative with respect to y of this guy is going to be negative 8y to the third, and the derivative of 3x cubed is 0. Now we can find the, the, the second partial derivative, so f sub xx is going to be 18x to the first, and the partial second partial derivative with respect to y is going to be negative 24y squared. To compute the mixed partials, we'll go ahead and do that in the next video, but um, we can compute the partial of this guy here with respect to y and this guy here with respect to x to get those two 
mixed partial derivatives.